Lotus on top of that. Yep. Jesus, he had a lot of Lotus money. Ags and almost an Octarine plus the Midas. As the offlane Morkling, who was solo the seconds. entire game pretty much. It was really insane. Yeah, I don't I don't understand how he got that Five much, but I guess remain. that's what happens when you get that uh, trio of heroes, you just happen to get a, a ton of farm and then eventually win the game. So we've got a draft, baby. Yeah, for this match, uh, we are gonna head into the draft. All right, well, Shadow Fiend taken out again. Yeah, Vici will just rinse and repeat. No big surprise there. This time, Die Unknown will ban out the Alchemist right away. A little I bit of respect there. I mean, it's kind of funny that they banned it out, even how well the he aided last game. Like, Kotaro, like, just decimated that lane. Maybe harder than I've ever seen a TA win that matchup. Yeah. And then they just Ten couldn't quite to get everything together to breach the high ground when they needed to. That was really the Five kind of the, the story hurry, for me is hurry. they had a pretty good stranglehold in that early game. The first real big team fight, they like 5-0'd Michi. And I was thinking, okay, they actually can do this. Mm -hmm. They can win this game. They can go take it, you know, take Rosha and get the tier twos down and just pressure the map. But it never really felt like it got to a point where they were actually like containing Michi. They were Radiant always finding spam. their farm. Like at the very least, Burning and Super were always off somewhere, just finding something for themselves. And right. maybe the support suffered a bit, but even Ice 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 managed to get away with a lot that game. So yeah. this time around, not sure if Unknown wanted to do something similar. Yeah, I would love to see them pick the A again, because I honestly think that he he played a great game in yeah. game number one. Last game, Five Fenrir was remain. just sort of the sacrificial space creator in he a lot of regards. He was he zero really and six, do much. and yeah. just kind of ran around and helped to, to deal with pressure, and he was just a walking tombstone, basically. And then at the end, he had a mech, and that helped a little bit. I mean, but... heck, in the beginning of the game, all he really did was give the TA kills, because they were playing like <laughs> yeah. 2v1 mid, right? And then Kotaro just walks up and is like, whatever, I got Die max Bell to level seven, you're just dead. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Now, Vici banned out the Queen of Pain, and Unknown, think about it, and opt to take out the Doom. It was their second ban in game number one, a hero they really don't like to play against, and Vici will change it up. They'll go with the first pick, Slardar, most likely for Ice 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 in the offlane. Yeah, I like the Slardar opening. At least you open to a lot of different things that you can do, and it doesn't necessarily have to be offlane. It can be core, it can be offlane, it can be support. It's a very ambiguous hero. You mm -hmm. don't have to set it in one particular is, is place. Is the support Slardar really something to be feared? Uh, I don't know about support. It's less Only likely, I think, than a one roll or a three roll. Yeah. But it is always possible. Five it just seconds. depends. You know, hurry, sometimes hurry. you see a niche situation where you go, ah, okay, we can actually move our Sardar to a, a different time. role. We don't have to put him in one particular place. But right. it just leaves you the freedom. That's the most important part. Absolutely. What do Unknown want to go for here? Last game they opened with the Gyrocopter Winter Wyvern, so very early out of the gate. You kind of knew what they wanted to do in terms of looking for mid-game team fight presence. Yeah. I would like to see them... They're not going to pick Dazzle now, at least ban it in the second phase, because I think Dazzle Slardar is just a disgusting combination that you should pretty much never give away. Yeah, we talked about it in our pregame a little bit, the yeah. natural synergy with the, all the physical damage and the minus armor and... Yeah. Also, Slardar just has issues with initiating, taking a lot of damage, and can be susceptible to getting blown up. So just the nature of having a shallow grave to get him that get out of jail free card definitely come in handy. Yeah, I like it a lot. And also, we were doing a little bit of research on the unknown before we actually got into this game, and you brought up the fact that they had actually picked Abaddon in the past. Mm -hmm. It's actually very good against Slardar. Yeah. Because uh, Aphotic Shield is a fairly low Dusk. cooldown. You can remove the amp just about as often as it's applied but as we are going to see this very aggressive opening from unknown not really surprising given the way they played game number one mm -hmm. and given the fact that they're radiant i also think that these kind of heroes are conducive to just being on that side of the map and being able to kind of crush your laning face absolutely definitely fits their play style like you mentioned before this is a patch that fits the play style these these kind of south american teams that just yeah. really like to bring it to you and, and be super aggressive and Dive with that beachy will grab lich for their first support interesting that they actually pick lich instead of banning it i know that if it's a dual offlane it's obviously going to be strong but the one thing about Lich is that he's very susceptible to kind of this early game five-man aggression. Right. You're really just picking him to win a lane. Ice armor is always going to be useful, five for sure. Remain. But it's more of that hero that you just don't want to play against as a Slardar, I think. 
Look, instead of rush, we just want to pick it ourselves. So I'm wondering if they had something else in mind for putting that Lich with another hero rather than just the Slardar. I mean, Lich Doom is that duo that's all the rage on this patch. I'm trying to think of yeah. other really scary Lich duos that have become prominent. I mean, anything with Lich is good. That's the thing, right? Yeah. Like, he makes any lane good just by sacrifice Radiant and just spam. by having pretty much infinite mana to harass. And Ice Armor, even in the earliest stages Dyer's of the game, spam. It's very hard to try to fight aggressively into it because it's not really right. just about the armor. It's about the slow that you get whenever you try to hit. It's just so frustrating to play mm -hmm. into. So now getting into the, the band phase here, round two, Husker going to be taken out from Beachy, seconds. which I find interesting because it's kind of an odd band, but it again, it fits that aggressive Five style seconds. we've been talking hurry, about. Hurry. He's also a, a very good laner. Yeah. Radiance I just band. think that Husker is very weak to Slardar the the one thing that i have to go and kind of scratch my head about because amplify damage just obliterates husker yeah that's his big weakness he's really good against magical damage but heavy physical he just can't yeah you actually just stand seconds. up against and he dies yeah that the one tool that really lets you man fight the the husker Five seconds remain and now that wisp gets banned completely ignored in game one which i was really surprised because both these time. teams do play wisp at least occasionally Let's go around. Vici will take it out of the pool. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see that Dazzle ban anymore after having seen a Lich. Like, sometimes when you're picking a Dazzle, you're going to go for, like, the full five-man lineup. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have, like, an initiation-type hero team, in picking. one of the supports, then picking Dazzle is very unlikely. So you're not going to see, like, Lich Dazzle together very often, unless your cores are the ones who are going to be making the space and setting up for the kills, you know? Right. So I don't think that uh, Vici will go for that, and it also means that Unknown don't have to burn a ban on it, which is why they take out the Gyro and the Lina instead. I mean, do you think Unknown could look for the Dazzle themselves? It is possible, but it pretty much means that Tusk would have Ten to automatically to offlane in that situation. Right. Because I think Tusk support is weaker than Tusk Five offlane, hurry, and I think that Undying hurry. support is okay. Like, it's passable. And we saw it work in game one. Yeah, I mean, Reserve Fenrir, time. the poor guy, he was the martyr for the team, but it ended up working out, so I'm sure he's fine with it. But for now, Unknown looking at the... Uh... They're chewing through this reserve time, man. They're really yeah. thinking about where they want this draft to go. Makes me wonder if they're just not sure what to do against this Ten opener exactly with pick. Vici, or if they're still trying to decide how they want to approach this game, if they want to Five go for early mid-game aggression hurry, again, hurry. or do something a little more oh, focused towards the late game, but that answers that question. Okay. Third pick, Death Prophet. You know, I love this hero against Slardar. Now, it's one of those situations where the heroes kind of counter each other, but if you think about it, Slardar's mode of initiation typically is either sprinting in or blinking in. Mm -hmm. If you have Exorcism on when the Slardar blinks in, more often than not, he is the only target that is in range of Exorcism at that given point because he's the initiator. Right. He's the first one in. So the first seconds. thing that, that comes to my mind is you get obliterated by, by spirits. Mm -hmm. They just do unreasonable amounts of damage. And they continually buffed level 1 Exorcism for like 3 or 4 patches in a row. Reserve so time. now at level 1, you get 8 spirits. It's pretty good. That's not even considering witchcraft, which adds spirits to exorcism every single rank. Yep. So, I mean, th this hero is strong. And a lot of the South American teams have run it in the past, so. She's very, uh, she, she reminds me of Brewmaster in the sense that those early ults are so important. You can't they afford are. to have missed ults in the sense that you pop it and then die right away or you don't get any objectives. That is the crux of this hero. If you can make the team fights work and utilize the exorcism to find kills or find objectives or, or make space, she's really powerful. But if you can't do that, then she seems to kind of fall off. That's, that's it's very true. Thing. I mean, it's a long cooldown. It's it's a two minute and fifteen second cooldown, I think. Yep. Or two minute and twenty five. Yeah. It's it's long. It's so like you said, scale. <laughs> you got to try to get something out of it whenever you pop it. But at level seven, I think you have now twelve spirits. Whereas, think about this for a second, right? Originally, it was four. Ten seconds to okay. pick. Four. That is awful. Exactly Five like seconds. the Slaughter Hurry, we were talking Hurry. about yeah. in game one, of, of how he has gone from, okay, this spell kind of stinks, to maybe Radio it's a little bit too strong now. And who knows? Maybe will Death Prophet come back in this in this major? Will she be I the unsung hero? I think she actually is so good in this patch. Because okay. If you think about the other heroes that are picked so frequently, let's just take Unknown's Draft as an example. Undying and Tusk. These two heroes can set Venom up fights Manta. whenever. And they're even going to pick Venno on top of this. So this is a little bit of a, a deviation from the norm and how they're going to be running Venno. 
because it looks to me like it's going to be core. It has to be, I think. So core Vano, mid death prophet. I want to see how this plays out because personally, I think that right now Vici don't have the tools to fight into exorcism. And honestly, Winter's Curse, I don't really see being that useful against these heroes because nobody does any right-click damage. Yeah, you're just seconds. looking at a bunch of heroes who are, okay, I'm going to drop Plague Wards. I'm going to pop Exorcism. Five I'm going to drop seconds. Poison Nova, like, yeah, like, Tombstone. Yeah, Tuscan it's... Undying just don't punch you that hard. So all things Radiant considered, spread. it doesn't really seem that scary. That is wild. And now Vici, they go for the Tiny. And of course, Wisp has been banned out, so it's not a Tiny-Wisp combo. Is this just a... a... Burning tiny for the safe lane. I feel like I've been watching I, too, too much seconds. sexy bambo is coming to mind here. That that off lane tiny. But I mean, what seems more likely hurry, to hear the off lane tiny or off lane slardar? Mm, I think off lane slardar is probably that. still more likely. That, that's where I'm leaning as well. I mean, for CL, I've definitely been known to run the off lane tiny from time to time. But I think this is more of a, a core position for two reasons. One. He needs the levels to be able to blow heroes up. Like, that's what Vici are looking for right now. They wanted that hero that can go in, get the Death Ten Prophet down straight away. No fuss, just go in, kill that hero, be Five done with it, right? Just hit her with a combo and it's Yeah, 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 because right now, Unknown Radiant's don't have a lot of save. So are they going to go back and pick up something like a Dazzle if they're going to be running that Venomancer as a core? Yeah. Or they, they need to pick something that can protect the Death Prophet because they have very little in the way of Disable. Exactly. So they need something that's either going to help their five-man death fall, or they need something that's going to protect the death prophet. I feel like this last pick from Unknown has to be something that pulls the team fight together. So I was just going to say they have very few disables right now, and aside from Venomous Gale, seconds. I mean that's the big problem with Tiny is getting kited, getting locked down, and getting yeah. those auto attacks off. If he's not caught by the Venomous Gale, he'll have fun. Not except pick. Viper has now come out. So there you go. So team it poison. is support Veno, right? Uh, well, I guess it could still be support Tusk and support Undying. This has got to be, but, first off, the greenest team I have ever seen. Yes. You do not see teams with this, like, many different kinds of greens that often. It's not often you see Veno and Viper on the same side. What? What, <laughs> what is happening? It's mid-tiny. Okay. You know, that thought crossed my mind, but I instantly I just, just nixed it as, as just... I, well, wow. they're gonna... This is what I assume is gonna happen, right? They're gonna send Ice 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 to the off lane. They're mm -hmm. gonna do Lich Tiny mid. And then they're gonna do Winter Wyvern Medusa safe lane. Okay. Because here's the thing, right? Like, Death Prophet is a pretty hard hero to beat in lane just because of spam. Like, Witchcraft and Crypt Swarm make you pretty formidable. You're not really gonna get ganked by the lineup of Vici Gaming. Mm -hmm. So what I assume is gonna happen is they're just gonna stick Lich mid to keep the Death Prophet down, try to prevent Exorcism from being too much of an early game problem. Or wait a minute, is it position one Death Prophet? Because Katara is playing Viper right yeah, now. Yeah, so it'll be Viper mid. I think so there's going to be safe lane DP. They might be assuming that it's a dual lane Five mid, in which case they would remain. want the Death Prophet to dodge, I guess. Right, so she'll the Death go Prophet safe needs lane. Levels. And then she'll have a solo matchup up against the Slardar. I don't know, man. This is really weird. So maybe Unknown will just go for the aggro tri lane here with a Venno that's Undying Tusk. I mean, there's a lot today. of kill potential there if that's the route they want to go. I just want to see what the hell the lanes are going to be. Wow. Well, the Vici side will be somewhat more predictable here. Slardar will head to the off lane. FY will head up top, and it looks like, yep, Burning will take Medusa and head to the safe lane. So I think you were right with that dual lane mid, at least to get things started with Lich and Tiny. Oh no, they are going to put Death Prophet mid. They're just, uh, maybe they just don't want play Death Prophet on Hikaru. Yeah. Now, Unknown is one of these teams where their 1 and their 2 and their 4 and their 5 are pretty interchangeable. They don't have locked roles in terms yeah. of who does what. So it is a little bit difficult to predict based on which player has which hero. Safe lane Viper. Interesting. Well, he'll definitely get a lot of farm down here, that's for sure. Yeah, if he's against the starter, I won't be too bad. But I, I worry about this DP's ability to handle this dual lane mid. I mean, I was worried about the first game, and I was proven pretty wrong in the sense no, that that's true. Unknown had a very solid laning phase. If they can do the same thing with this lineup, this is a very different kind of beast to deal with. Mm -hmm. It's like running into you with Plague Wards and Gale, Poison Nova, Exorcism. They just deal Begin so much damage sports. by being alive. Like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> being alive just like hurts Vici. It. Yeah, it's, it's just like, okay, I'm alive, you're taking damage. Yeah. What an interesting draft here. This is. And how are you going to kill Tombstone when you have to walk into a Poison Nova and Exorcism? Like, yeah. 
That just seems terrifying. Why are there three people mid? Ichi <laughs> are just like this game has already devolved into block, chaos. You know? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so it's undying death prophet mid for the radiant. FY will start off with the Archie burn just to try and push him back a little bit. There will be some support. Super hasn't skilled anything quite yet, but decay from Zetok will steal a little bit of strength and push him back. It's a dual lane in the mid on both sides of the coin. Yeah, we knew the dual lane was coming from Vichy, but uh, I suppose if you're going to have the situation, you kind of have to put the Undying there as well. The dual lane we were thinking, though. Uh, yeah, I thought Assuming would it would be, be a there. Lich. And oh, Ice Ice Ice, Ice. Ice. Look at all of this Toxin down bottom. So much slow. They won't quite find the kill. They bring him down low, but he will eat a Tango and survive. Oh. Venno Viper in the safe lane. This is just... This is disgusting. It actually is disgusting, literally and metaphorically in this case. <laughs> yeah. This is too, like. This is what I think of as the anti Merlini lane, his two least favorite heroes in the same lane. I mean, I can understand Viper, but why are you getting to hate on Venno? I don't know. I mean, he's a, a little bit boring to play. He, but... he doesn't like the idea of a hero that presses R and then suicides. He says it's just stupid. All right. Well, what about his a hero words, that presses mine. R and deletes another hero from the game? Because that's pretty much what Doom does. Yeah. <laughs> and Necro. All right. Here we go. Burning. He'll get initiated on. We're just caught by the ice shards. We'll go for that early point in Mana Shield and Mystic Snake. I'm always curious to see what build Medusas go for early on. I feel like there's a lot of different ways you can approach this hero. I think you just max uh, Mystic Snake and Shield, honestly. Okay. So you do. Like, go, you think Max Snake is the way to go here, and not, yeah. not the stats build. I mean, the stats build's okay. I just feel like you need the survivability of having the max shield. If he wants to go like full defensive, he could max shield and oh, get stats. For the dead. But having the Mystic Snake also means that you can steal mana in lane, which does add to your overall health anyway, if you that's, want to think of it that way. Yeah, that's a good way to approach it. This is a scary duo lane though, and they'll go right in on the burning. He pops the healing south, but out come the ice shards, burning in a lot of trouble here, but can they actually secure the kill? The Arctic burn from FY, slowing them into oblivion. Burning will turn, throw out that Mystic Snake to steal a little bit of mana. He will survive the onslaught, and it looks like FY will be able to make it back to safety near his tower. Zetok losing his decay stacks. It actually he misses, misses right yeah. there. The greedy will walk through the tower, so... Close, but no cigar, as uh, looks like Viper did intentionally suicide there in the jungle. No, 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 he didn't suicide in the jungle, he died in Lightning Creeps. Oh, he died in creep. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, he just died in Creeps. Oh, Courier mid. Fenrir are gonna wrap Fenrir around, he'll find the Courier Radiant's with a bottle on it. Oh, huge oh, pick there for the Lich. Peace that hurts bad. That hurts end. real bad. The Death Prophet is, I think, the most important hero on this lineup for the early game. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to get your exorcism going, you need to get good farm, you need to become tanky. And part of that good farm is being able to crow slash refill the bottle and spam out those Crypt Swarms. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about that. This is, uh... Well, he got super pretty low. He yeah. does have his bottle now. Right. I mean, he's having a pretty good time in the lane. We'll see if he can keep it up in the next two minutes before his courier comes back. So... How did Viper die down here? I'm a little surprised. I think he was trying to commit the Ice 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 pretty hard going for a kill and then uh, ended up okay. tanking a couple of tower shots and then That's just ran away on. and died to creeps. Yeah, Ice Ice Ice. Getting some okay experience. He is halfway through level 4, but farming is definitely a difficulty. Being aggressive against the Viper though, kind of pump fakes the Slytherin Crush there. Well, the one thing to note is that Viper does kind of need levels in the early game. Because you need Corrosive, Nether Toxin, and Poison Attack all together to really get your laning phase going. and. Vichy with some more early rotation series, Fenrir and Ice Ice Ice, making their way through the woods, looking for that Death Prophet. Oh, if he gets caught, he will get dove and die. Yeah, she doesn't see it coming. There's the sprint from Ice 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 around right the backside. Slithering Crush as well as Frost Nova. That's an easy kill. First blood goes the way of the Slardar. Very nice for Vichy here. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, FY in a little bit of trouble. Will turn with Arctic Burn. Almost finishes off the Tusk, but he goes into the Snowball. One charge is not quite enough. Burning will come in for that one arrow to get the kill. A one for one. Not too bad for Vichy, actually. Medusa getting a freebie. I mean, this is the start that Vichy need. Yep. If you lose your laning phase to what Unknown have, I think it's extremely difficult to win the game from that point because they have insanely good death yeah. ball potential. I think they may try something for Zetok here. Nope, he'll just retreat back to safety. Nice. Ice, 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 ice. Does he want to go in? Yeah, there we go. Connects with a slithering crush. Snowball nice. forward on two. Burning getting low, and it's Ice, Ice, Ice actually dies. First to trade one for one, though. Deuce getting another kill. And even though they lose the Slardar, I feel like that's still not that bad of a trade. 
burning the big breadwinner out of this this whole exchange in the top lane. I'm totally okay with giving my Medusa early game kills. I mean, he's almost level six. It's five minutes in. Yeah, he's got great. treads. He's got Bassy done. He's feeling pretty good. I want to know what item build he is. I don't think I've ever seen a burning Medusa game actually, like alive at least. Yeah. I wonder. Not really a Lincoln's game. It's mm. never a Lincoln's game. <laughs> Down bottom, Viper, yep, he'll get picked off. Power of the Slardar Lich, man. Even a tanky hero like Viper, there's just so much slow, and if once he connects with the stun, it's really difficult. Now Excel, he's gonna find himself in a world of hurt. Ice 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 goes slithering on in, slithering crush. Fenrir will take some decent damage here, but they should be able to get this kill on the Venno. Ice 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 just needs one more poke with that trident, and he'll chase him down. Six to two is Vici take control of the early game. Yeah, it's getting a little bit out of hand here. They're really going to need their Death Prophet to get some objectives with the first couple of exorcisms, or at the very least, try to win a team fight or two. Yeah. I think with the level 1 exorcism being much stronger now, there is potential you can just use it to fight if you want to try to stop Vichy from just running at you. Because mm -hmm. it now seems like Ice 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 and his rotations, they've all been successful so far. Mind. Even if he's trading his own life, he's still finding something. Mind. Yeah. And that's really all Vichy want to do at this point. Just make the early game chaotic for unknown. Because we talked about their lack of disables. That's pretty much what Vichy are exploiting. It's like, okay, you can't stun us when we have a Slardar and a Tiny who can just kill you yeah. and stun. I mean, I look at games like this as just perfect evidence of why Ice 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 is hyped up so much as a player. This is such a difficult safe lane to go up against, and instead of just sitting in the lane or getting picked off, he's made things happen elsewhere. That yep. Slardar at level 3, level 4, rotates mid, he just rotated to the top lane, and now all of a sudden, we're 7 minutes in, he's level 6, he's 2-1-2, two, and two, and he has made so much out of this very difficult lane. It's just realizing the shortcomings in the game and realizing what you can do to circumvent that problem. Yeah. It's like, what's my problem? Okay, well, my lane sucks. I got three points in the sprint at level six. I got slithering crush. My movement speed is extremely high. I'm just going to run at people. Let's find some kills, man. Like, even if he doesn't end up getting a kill from his rotation, he still either secures farm for the lane that he's going to and create some space. There's a big rotation mid here, Draskal. Four heroes going in on the super. It'll be greedy to start it off. They will follow up with some damage, but a huge stun, huge toss. Now Ice 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 is on his way in. Three very low heroes. He's out to try to commit on super behind the hero, but Death Prophet's already gone down. Excel looks like he'll fall as well as FY connects with a couple Arctic Burn charges here. Greedy will make it away with a nice set of ice shards, and while all that was going on, Zetok did manage to find the kill on the tiny, but Vici make the most out of this here, and it's not even over yet. Ice Ice Ice, he's still diving past the tier two. He's slithering. Greedy will hit him with a walrus punch. He misses the crush. Oh no. Ice 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 will fall after that greedy dive. Very well played by Greedy, though. That was... That was greedy of Ice Ice Ice. Yeah. <laughs> He's diving in here too, but he, you can tell he's feeling pretty confident right now in the way that the early game is kind of rolling out here for Vichy. Yeah. And I mean, he should be, because burning is just three farming up the storm. Yeah, that was all space created. Ooh, hops to the other side of the ice shards. Could have potentially been a kill here for Greedy if he was on the other side of it, but now burning will just pop his mana shield and slither back to safety. A lot of slithering heroes this game, Draskal. A lot of tails, a lot of wings. A lot of wiggling. Not a, yeah, not a lot of feet, actually. Alright, so who has feet? Tusk, Undying, Tiny, I guess, technically has feet. Yeah, sure. Oh, down bottom, Kataro, he's gonna get initiated on and well, pops a Viper Strike, but it's not gonna do a hell of a lot. That'll be another easy kill, and this is like we talked about, where Slardar is just so damn strong. Minus 10 armor, it's just ridiculous. You know, you don't think of Lich as a scary right clicker, but if you're negative armor, yeah, those right clicks from Lich add up. Everything hurts when you have minus five armor at nine minutes into the game. That is very, very true. And this is a, a really good example of, like, the Viper pick for me, I wasn't really getting. Like, I guess they wanted a lane dominator to put up against the Lich because they knew that the Lich was going to be in one of the one of the two lanes, either mid or bottom, right? As mm -hmm. top burning is going to get punched here again. Yeah, but he will stay alive. Compliments of the cold embrace from FY. Now they're trying to turn on to Zetok. Winner's Curse comes out. He will move into Flesh Golem form, but they might have the damage here. Soul Rip just barely keeps him alive. And Greedy does press forward. And he won't be able to find the kill. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Viper gets picked off again by the Slardar Lich duo. The slow tumbling with the Sprint Slytherine Crush is just too much for this Viper to deal with. Yeah, they're just like bullying every single lane at this point. Yeah. I mean, we again, we talked about it during the draft, the shortcoming of Unknown is their inability to really take early game fights. They rely heavily on kiting. 
the only disabler is the tusk. And this Death Prophet still doesn't have any points in Exorcism. Yep. So, I'm kind of wondering, what is the go for them? Like, when do they feel confident in being able to do something? Well, could be in some trouble here. We'll see a rotation coming in from the Lich, but there's a lane ward down, so we'll be able to scout it out. And it does move to safety. But if that ward wasn't there, I think that's a guaranteed kill with uh, Super and F or Fenrir. This is a rough early game for Unknown, and like you said, I wonder when Death Prophet really will start to come online here and try to make stuff happen. She will go for the Yule Scepter first item, and does not skill the ultimate at level 9, grabs that last point in Witchcraft, so we'll have to wait until level 10 before we see Exorcism. Well, this is the old build, right? Yep. Like, back when Exorcism level 1 was really bad, this is what you used to see. Even if you get it at level 9, you're still gonna get, what, 13 spirits? Yeah, with four points or three points into witchcraft, so I think that's plenty. It could have already applied a decent amount of pressure with that ult, and if you get it earlier, you could have even used it like maybe two or three times by this point. I mean, right now it feels like unknown, just don't know what their game plan is at the moment. Burning is still free farming, he gets a tier one tower up top completely unchecked. Viper's going for a hand of Midas, but has just nothing to show for it. Still doesn't even have the Midas complete, and he's gonna get picked off again. Ice 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 just charges in. The Frost, or the ultimate from Lich, was already oh, utilized. And if Ice 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 lives here, oh my, now the Tombstone comes in from Zetok. They will be able to finish him off. It's Undyne that'll get credit for the kill, so at least they make it a one for one. But, I mean, Viper can't even finish his Midas here, Drasko. That's how bad this is. Yeah, they, they really need this Death Prophet to hit level 10. Like, you need your ulti so bad. That's going to be really the test. Radiance if the Death Prophet ultimates attacked. fall short in the first couple of uses, I think this game Dyer's is just going to become extremely damage. difficult for them. I mean, it's already starting to ball out Radiance of control. About 4k net worth and experience is the lead for Vici with Dusa topping the charts. Dyer's and Burning going for a attacked. nice early combative build. He can he can join these fights if he wants to. Power Treads, Drum, Aquila. He's ready to rock and roll. I think everyone on Vici can fight. Like... There's even Blink on the Tiny. So he just needs to send it out. Super just waiting for the Curry to get back to base. Once that happens, pretty much everyone on the side of Unknown dies to that combo. Yeah. Yeah, the Blink Dagger, I think, is the right build for Tiny here. Just a lot of catch. And I mean, even this Viper, he's he's a free kill pretty much every time. Ice 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 will just walk in. Sure, he takes a Viper Strike, but sets it up for an easy kill there. And Super will be able to punch him to secure the death. Oh, I'm dying. You can't walk oh, over there. Oh, no. Zetok, that was ambitious. Walks right into the danger zone. Easy two for nil. And Beachy aren't done yet. Ice, ice, ice. He's got the sprint on. He finds himself. He gets hit by a Gale, but it doesn't matter. They just got way too much burst damage. These pickoffs are just all too easy for Beachy. She's showing once again why they are widely considered to be one of the top three teams in the world right now. Oh yeah, no Just doubt. a very good understanding of heroes that aren't even seen that much. Like, how often do we see Death Prophet and Venomancer Viper together, right? Yeah. Like, that's a lineup that's fairly uncommon, and they're just showcasing that they understand how to deal with it thoroughly, even at this very early stage. And, yeah. I just really like this build that Burning went for. I feel like Medusa is often characterized as a hero that can't get involved early on, and... Yep. I mean, Stone Gaze is a really powerful spell, attacked. even in the early levels. And I like that they're starting to get Burning involved, especially now that he was able to get that Tier 1 tower in his safe lane. Well, Mystic Snake does a tremendous amount of damage, mm -hmm. as That's long as true. you can land that on multiple targets. That's the hard part, is like, early in the game, it's not often that you see like 3, 4, 5 heroes in close enough proximity to really land a good Mystic Snake, but... In this game, it's possible, just because of the kind of lineup that Unknown has put together. Well, Yules is up on the Death Prophet. She's also level 10, about halfway to level 11. So we could still see our first exorcism. Maybe that will be the turning of the tides. What are you thinking about this uh, Midas on Viper? Do you think that was the play here? I actually thought he was going to go for Mech. Because, yeah, me like, too. Mech with Death Prophet ulti, that just seems like, you know... That's like a logical choice. Because you're building a Venom with wards. You have Exorcism, you got Tombstone. Why not just have a mech on top of it to make your 5 versus 5 even more terrifying? But I can see how Yules is good for spam, it's good for farm. They are smoked up here. Level 2 Exorcism is available. 
Unknown starting things off. He doesn't have invisibility oh, rune on. They have a sentry down. Oh no, this could be bad for. Oh no, the Death Prophet will be able to hop into the Yule. That'll buy him a little bit of time. But now the Stone Gaze comes out. The Chain Frost from Lich will start bouncing. DP the first hero to go down in this fight. She didn't even get to use the ultimate. Chain Frost still bouncing around like crazy, doing some damage to heroes. They'll throw Ice 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 in the Undying. That'll secure the kill there. It's a fast two for nil for BT. The rest of Unknown in quick retreat. But Excel, he's going to get left behind. And with that minus R, a tiny just punches so hard. Hard, tosses him up. The Mystic Snake will bring him down. Ice, ice, ice. One hit from death. The tower shot might be enough to kill him, but no. He'll get an earned charge. He'll stay alive. Now the Cold Embrace buys him some time, and Tusk will get finished off. It's a 4 for nil. 18 to 5. Vici Gaming continuing to dominate unknown. That was so unfortunate. Like, they walked down past the sentry and then Ops, so they knew the Death Prophet was in this. Oh. And then they just dropped another sentry in lane and killed her before she could even use exorcism. It's been almost 16 minutes, and we that? have not seen the ability used. And Ice 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 is also going to find the Viper again. Absolutely. Viper now 0, 7, and 1. This, I mean, you pick a hero like Viper to dominate the lane and have an early game presence. When he falls behind like this so, so early on, it's tough stuff. He's he's just a he's a paperweight at this point. Oh uh oh, four staff on the city talk. They put him behind the tower. We will see Death Prophet utilize the ulti for the first time this game. Forces a glyph from Beachy, and they will be able to grab this tower. Now that's something. Yeah, I mean they're gonna have to just like five man around that ulti. That is, that's pretty much their only game plan. Every two minutes, yeah. Exorcism is extremely potent. Even when the enemy team is ahead, you can never underestimate the amount of damage that it will do. But I think the, the problem that they're going to run into now is that Vici have had such a good start on their Tiny, especially, with having the Blink Drums already available. Viper again in the bottom lane, caught by Ice Ice Ice. This is what I mean, like they just have too many ways of jumping you now. Yes. And because the Death Prophet is opted to go in for the Yules and not something that gives you a little more tankiness during the early game, like maybe he picks up a casual point booster now, which will help. But I think he still just gets blown up whenever the Beachy see him. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't know. How do you even start to recover here? The Midas, I feel like, is actively working against him. That's where all of his gold is gone, and it just does nothing to keep him survivable. And he's barely even able to use it. I mean, he can keep it on cooldown, but... He still can't really farm at any reasonable rate. And don't forget, all the while burning is just racking up the farm. He now has a completed Yasha and almost 2k gold to deal with. So he's oh, he's in good shape. Is dead oh. too. Yep, caught out again. Yep. So much catch here from the dire side. Kind of got a feel for unknown because the first game was a lot closer than this one has been yeah. so far. This just fell apart oh, too nice, early nice, on. Nice getting his urn taken. That's... Yep, that's unfortunate here. He will just barely survive with the force staff. Did they kill the urn or did they take it? Looks like they killed it. Uh, it's just a little bit of hubris coming out from Daryl. Yep. He does that. Having a little fun with it. Radiance bottom tower. Well, that's okay. FY split pushing in the bottom lane. At Winter Wyvern, watch out. He's almost at a blink dagger as well. Additional catch here for DG Gaming. I honestly don't know what they're supposed to do outside of 5 at this point. Oh, Z-Talk. He gets caught by a crush, sets it up for super toss combo, finds the kill. Another easy pick off here for Beachy. They will disengage. And just look at this ward control here. The entire Radiant Jungle is just completely warded. I mean, Beachy know exactly where they're going to go. They've got complete map control. Taro, he TPs in, they know exactly where he is. Ice 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 hits him with an amp damage, they toss him back into the dire team. Poor Viper. Yeah. I'm starting to feel bad for him. Starting to? Oh, uh oh, Death Prophet, she gets caught, Winner's Curse comes out, gets dropped seconds after the exorcism is utilized. We'll be on cooldown now. He got cranky when he tried to walrus punch him. Oh my, it just gets worse here for Unknown. Now the tough fall. Undying gets off the tombstone, it gets taken out, Chain Frost will fall, and that's it. 19 minutes in, they call the GG, and honestly, not a moment too soon. It'll be a five-man wipe as the Venno gets taken out. Five for nil to round things out. Game two, BG, man. They came out of the gate, guns blazing. Yeah, that, that was uh, that was pretty one-sided. This is more along the lines of what I was expecting when I saw the first game, mm -hmm. but I mean... Unknown show that they have some potential. It's just a matter of this lineup, I think, was too far off center.